Whew, it's been three years since my last video. Well, let's get started. Um, today I want to take a look at uh, Fusion Architecture for some kitchen cabinets where, uh, you know, in a kitchen what you probably want are some common elements like the plywood thickness and height and maybe, you know, the size of a cutout or something like that to be persistent across a set of cabinets. Um, but then to be able to make each individual cabinet unique and set its width and, uh, you know, configure how many drawers it has and all of those kind of changes. And, uh, you know, for sanity's sake, you probably don't want to try and manage all of that within a single document. So what we're going to do is take a look at um, uh, some things that have become possible since my last video uh, that weren't possible then using tools like Derive and Edit in Place uh, to make that happen. So. Uh, how do we get started? Okay, so the very first thing, I've, I've pre-baked a little bit of this stuff. So what we've got is a uh, basically a blank Fusion document. And the only thing that it contains uh, is a set of those common parameters, those things that we want to drive across several different cabinets and have be uh, the same. Um, uh, so you'll see, like I said, things like overall height or the plywood thickness. Um, you'll notice all of these are marked as favorites, and I think that that's pretty important, or uh, it's important for keeping it lightweight. It makes things simple. Um, I'll, you'll see that when I go to do the derive. Um, then what I've got here is a, a basic cabinet. Right now this is not being driven by, uh, the, the two are not linked up. Uh, we're gonna pretend that this is a cabinet that was already built up and that we wanna add those parameters into. Uh, you know, I think ideally you would do, uh, you would just start by building the parameters and then uh, start building this and, and kinda add the parameters as you go, but that's too much work for a video. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll start by uh, you could do this in either direction, either from um, from the source parameters, you could go and create a derive and point it towards the cabinet, or from within this uh, cabinet, you can say, we're going to insert a derive. Um, we're going to grab that source parameters file, select it. It'll kind of pop me back over to there. Uh, you know, this is where you normally, I think the, the most common usage of derive is to grab actual model objects, like a component or a body or a sketch. In this case, we just don't even have any of that kind of stuff. What we're gonna do is make sure that uh, favorites is selected and checked. Um, like I said, this is where you wanna make sure that those, uh, the parameters that you wanna pull through are, uh, are, have that star applied and are considered a favorite. So we'll click okay. And what you'll see now when we go into the parameters of this file is a set of source parameters. Set, it's, it's all of the favorite parameters from that source file. Uh, you'll notice they're not editable here, right? It's a derive, so it is one directional. Um, uh, it's read-only effectively. Uh, the only place to change it is within the source parameters file. Uh, that's perfect for what we want here. Um, and like I said, right now this, this model is, is not really uh, param parameterized, par par parametric? Yeah, let's go with parametric. It's not really parametric, uh, but let's go through and we'll just, we'll just add some stuff in here. So this is the height. Let's go ahead and add. Oh, and here's, here's one additional thing. If you Notice there when I started typing it, didn't immediately find these. What we want to do is set these as favorites. Why is that not working? Um, you know what? Let's, let's take another stab at that. There we go. Must add something selected that was preventing that click there. Let's set all of those as favorites. Uh, then we, when we come in here and we start typing height, we should actually see those. That's the overall height. You'll see it. You know, the model will start to kind of come into shape based on those driven dimensions. This should be the depth. Uh, this should be the plywood thickness. And the cabinet door should have a couple as well. This should be a negative plywood thickness. And those offset faces, this is my shadow gap. And let's see, I think these are the last ones and this would be the handle height. Nope, oh, this would be the handle width, and this would be the handle height. I don't think those are the only ones that are in here. Okay, so now this is this is nice and linked up back to that original file. If we were to make a change in here, this one would request a kind of a get latest on this derive and everything would update. Um, we can, let's even go ahead and test that just to make sure. Um, you know, one thing I noticed when I was doing that is that I actually kind of liked the, uh, the width being reversed. So let's just make that change on this, this cutout. Like I predicted, we get a get latest notice. Let's consume those changes. Oh, look at that, our, our handle cutout flipped to be the other direction. That's great, perfect. Okay, so but that's not really what we're after, right? That's pretty easy. You could just do this in one design, no big deal. Um, we want to be able to 
uh, have kind of a kitchen design file. So let's make one of those, like this one here. And we want to be able to insert, uh, let's see if we get, we want to be able to insert those cabinets into this design. Uh, that's pretty easy. We'll be nice and disciplined and we'll toss a as built on, joint on here just to keep this thing in place. Um, but really the critical piece we're after is we want to be able to make more than one of these and uh, and have them be unique, right? So let's copy and paste a new one in place. Let's joint it so that it stays adjacent to the one that we've already got. So right now we've got two copies. If we made a change to one, they're instance copies. You can see the one and the two there. If we made a change to one, it would happen to the other. It doesn't matter which one we make the change to, right? It's not still not what we want. Uh, we can use uh, save as and replace. Uh, this is this is just one way of getting to this point. It's the same as if we had made a copy of this document and inserted that instead. Let's call this one cabinet two. All right, you see now our instance is gone, so we've kind of broken that link between the two of them. Uh, let's go ahead and edit this one, and we'll make a change. Let's say we'll we'll grab the uh, we'll grab the carcass and that first sketch, and we'll say this one needs to be 30 inches wide. And you'll see it updates. Now we have two that are separate, uh, but the crucial key here, and let's go ahead and just hit save on this guy and we'll close down the, the kind of intermediate model there. The key here is that these still link back to this original uh, document. So both of them, right, both of their timelines, if we take a look at or we open up this cabinet too, uh, they're, they're both identical. You'll see that the same derive is present in both and that same set of parameters uh, are still driving both of these models. Uh, and that's what, that's what we're after. So now if we come in here and we make some changes to these and we say, you know, we really want uh, 32 inch tall and we want these base cabinets we want that and we're using serious plywood and uh, you know really we want six inches and the shadow gap is just too too small um, so let's make a fairly sizable update here uh, what's kind of magical about fusion in this instance is that you'll see uh, in kind of this uh, what I'm gonna call the second tier or the 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 end um, this kind of end component or this end design uh, it sees the change that happened to the source parameters. That is actually, uh, it's through each of these components. And it gives you this nice, um, nice warning that the component has out of date references. And it actually says open the component and update the references using git latest. Uh, but the secret is you don't actually even need to do that. Um, Fusion will let you apply those changes. And if you saw that, everything just updated and changed. Our shadow gap got larger. Our, uh, handle opening got a little bit bigger, uh, cabinet sizing changed a little bit. I mean, we were able to do that without even having to open these intermediate components. Um, we're also free to make, make changes using edit in place uh, to these, and you'll notice that when I hit save, uh, it's gonna save all three designs, both this parent and the two kind of children here. So um, I think that's it. I think it gets the, the, the gist of the concept of cross. Uh, you know, it's still not perfect. Um, you're still, going to see, oh, that's kind of a weird one, I got an odd, odd little error there. Um, what you'll still see is you, you want to make these cabinets as, um, as mature as possible uh, until the point where you start making copies and fragmenting them. And the reason is that, um, you know, say you decide to make a, a significant change to this, to the history or the um, design structure of this cabinet, and you want that to propagate to all of the different cabinets. Uh, that's just not something that this architecture is going to support. Um, you would have to make that same change to all instances of it individually, and that's a pretty painful process. So, um, so my, my suggestion there is get that, uh, get it as mature as possible before you start making copies. Uh, aside from that, it seems like a pretty, pretty well, um, seems like a pretty smooth architecture to use. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and end it there. Thanks.